Hello folks. So in this last video, I'm going to continue working on breakout in Pong. I'll run the code just to show how far I'd gotten last time. So you can see I had most of the mechanics worked out. The paddle was moving around left and right. The ball is moving by itself and there's built-in collision. The blocks are breaking correctly. So everything pretty much works now. However, the game is a bit unfinished. So for example, the ball's gone off the screen. I can still move the paddle. I've got no way of restarting and there's no player feedback, nothing like that. So I'm just going to tidy everything up and add some of these features into it just to make the game more complete. The first thing I want to do is add this uh, ability to determine whether the game is live or whether I need to reset the game because the ball is going out. So I'm going to define a couple of new variables within the game variables section. The first one is going to be live ball and I will start off by say, setting this to false. This condition I'm going to be using to monitor whether the round is active or whether it's uh, the ball's gone out. The other one is going to be game over and I'll set this to zero. So I already do have a game over variable within I believe it's the game ball class yeah so I do have one here but this is uh, a class variable so this is specific to the game ball class when I've made this variable up here, this is a global variable. So this is going to be used throughout the rest of the code. So now with those defined, I can go into the main game loop and I can start tweaking some of these things around. So first of all, I'm going to group my draw sections together. So rather than just saying draw wall, I will just say draw all objects. So I'm going to have my wall drawn in here and I'll copy the paddle into there. And I will also copy the game ball into there. So all of these will be drawn together one by one within this section. And now we'll have another little subsection down here, which is going to only be active when the game is live. So if live ball, meaning if the live ball condition has been set to true, only then do I really want to be able to move the paddle and move the ball. So I'm going to move these up here, indent them. And the other thing that I want to do, if you remember, my ball.move uh, function returns a variable to me. So if I come up here, uh, I've got a return self.gameOver. And this returns either a 1, or well, a 0, a 1, or a negative 1, depending on what's currently happening. So I can take that variable out of this because the function is returning it. So that variable that I previously defined, my global variable, which is gameOver, I'm going to set that equal to ball.move. So it's going to return that as soon as anything is changed. And then I just want to add a check. So if game over is zero, then that's fine. The game just continues. But if it's anything other than zero, so if it does not equal zero, then that means that something's happened to end the round. So I should set live ball to false. Now, because I've started the whole game with live ball already set to false, that means that if I run the game, uh, let's see if this will work. Yeah, so I can't start this. Nothing happens. I can't move anything around. I'm clicking on the screen and pressing the left and right arrow keys. But live ball is set to false. And as long as that's false, this condition is not being met. Therefore, I can't move anything. So I need to add a way of starting the game. And I'm going to do that in here by adding an extra event handler. So the next one that I'm looking for is a mouse click because that's how I want to start each round. So if event type equals pygame dot mouse button down. So that's a, a built in pygame function. So it just checks for a mouse button being clicked. And as long as live ball is currently false, I don't want to be able to currently like, keep resetting things. So I just only want to be able to click this when live ball is false. And as soon as I have done that, then I set live ball to true and the game starts. So let's run the code again. There we go. As soon as I click, the game begins. So what happens if the ball goes out? Can I click again? Yeah, but nothing resets. So I can keep clicking, but the ball is still moving there. The paddle is still here and the wall hasn't been reset. So I need to add some resets into this. So first of all, I'm going to add a reset to the ball class. So I've got my class for game ball and I'll come down here underneath all of these functions and I will define a new one. I'll say define reset. 
And this will take the same variables as the init function, which is x and y, or the same arguments, sorry. And now I'm going to copy everything from the init function down into reset instead. So I'll copy this into here. And all of these variables uh, essentially are now going to be defined at the point of reset. So I can come back into my init because now that's empty. And I'm going to call reset from the init function. So let's say self.reset. And I want to supply those two arguments, x and y. So what should now be happening is when I initially create my class, or sorry, an instance of this class, it will run the init function, which will call the reset function with the x and y coordinates. And it will essentially set everything up just as if, if uh, it was already a normal init. But because I now have a reset function on its own, anytime I call this, it's going to reset all of these variables back to the original ones. So where I currently create my ball uh, instance, I can copy this from here, come down into where I've got my mouse click check and reset the ball. So ball, and now I can call reset. And remember, it still needs to take an X and a Y coordinate. So I'll reset it the same place as I initially created that. I want it to be reset in the same place, which is relative to the paddle. So let's just check now if this has worked. So I'll start the game and I will let the ball go out. And if I click, it starts over again. Same again, and it starts over. So that's the ball reset working. Uh, and now we need to do the same thing for the, for the player paddle. So it's more or less the same concept. I just come up into the player paddle. Uh, I can define a reset function. So that will take self. Uh, oh, that's all it takes, just self. And then I can copy all these variables into there. So that will call reset. And now we need to call that reset function from the init. So self.reset. And I don't need to supply any variables like I did with the other one. So let's now come down into this, uh, this check here. And now I'm going to add the paddle. So player paddle dot reset. So that's going to reset the position of the ball and the paddle. And lastly, I want to reset the wall. Now, I don't actually need to create a new uh, reset function for this because create wall pretty much is a reset. If I go back down or back up into this wall class, so create wall, you notice the very first line of code is where I empty that list. So I create an empty blocks list and then I populate it with the blocks. So anytime I call this function, it's going to essentially just reset that blocks list anyway. So I don't need a separate function for that. So let's run this code to check if this is working. And break one block, let it come out. And as soon as I click, the game restarts. So that's the reset working well. Now I'll come out of this. But I don't really have any player instructions on the screen. So I need to be able to put some input so that the player knows what to do. The fact that they need to actually click to start the game. And a message when the ball has gone out. Or a message when all the blocks have been broken. So I'm going to use uh, text. I'm going to put text onto the screen. But as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, you can't directly put text onto the screen with Pygame. You need to uh, take the text, convert it into an image, and then draw that image onto the screen instead of the text. So that can get repetitive when you've got you know different lines of text that you want to add and you convert them each time. So with these kind of things, it's, uh, it's useful to create a function. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I'll come back up to the top first because I'll need to define a few extra variables up here. So the first one is I need an extra color. So I'll come down under all these colors and I will say text color. And this variable will be text underscore call. And I've set this to 78, 81, 139. So that will give my text a color. Uh, the other thing the text needs is a font. So add a section up here, define font, and I'll save this to a font variable, and then I will use pygame.font.sysfont. So this is a function within Pygame for specifying which font you want to use within your text. And I often use uh, Constantia. So this is the, the font that I often use, and then the size for that font. So with those defined, I can now create my draw text function. Uh, so I'll come down here. 
No, actually, I'll, I'll do it before all the classes so that it's a little bit easier to follow. So I'll do it right at the top here. So this is going to be my function for outputting text onto the screen. Define draw underscore text. And I want to give a few variables here or a few arguments. The first one is the text, the actual text that I want to put on the screen. Then it's going to be the font that I want to use. So I've only defined one font, but if you were making a more complicated game, you would maybe have a number of different fonts. So this function allows you to easily just flick which font it is you wanting to use for that particular text. So next I want to input text color and then the last two uh, variables or arguments are going to be my X and Y coordinates. So this function then, uh, as I said previously, it needs to take the text that I input, which is this line here, and convert it into an image. So I'm going to save that image as a variable. Image equals, and uh, this is another Pygame function. So the font dot render, and then you the first argument is the text that you, that you want to convert, and then you want to feed in the text color. So this alone, this line, converts that text using the font and the color into an image. So now I need to show the image onto the game window. So my game window, as you already know, is called screen. And then the function for putting any images onto the screen is blit. So what image do I want to blit? It's the image variable that I've just created. And where do I want to put it? So I'll use a tuple for this, which will be X and Y. And that's it. So that function will allow me to put any text onto the screen. So now I can come down into my main game loop and actually actually add this stuff into it. So really the only time that I want to show text on the screen is when the game is not live. As soon as the game is live, all the player needs to see is the paddle, the ball, and the, the blocks. You don't want any text on the screen. So I'll add a note, print player inst instructions. And if that's the case, I only want the text to appear when the game is not live, then I can just do a quick check. If not live ball, meaning it's the same as typing if live ball equals false, so if the game is not live, then I print, uh, print text onto the screen. But I want to look for particular conditions. So you remember my game over variable had different conditions depending on what state of the game we're at. So game over equals zero is only at the very, very beginning when the game is first initialized because game over starts off at zero, which means that nothing has happened. The player hasn't won and the player hasn't lost. They just haven't started the game yet. So the only text that I want to add at this point it's just to say, click anywhere to start. Then, if you remember, this is the draw text function I defined. So all of these arguments I'd already defined up above. So the next one I needed was in the font. Then after that was the text color. Uh, after that, the x and y coordinates. So I'll say 100 for x and for y. I want it roughly in the middle of the screen. So screen height divided by 2. But because my blocks take up most of the screen, I actually want to shift this down a little bit. So that's the first set of text. But what if, let's say, L if, what if the player has won? So you've broken all of the blocks. Well, in that case, game over is going to be equal to one. So I can just copy this text down, uh, but I'm going to have two lines of it. So the first line is going to say, you won. You won. And then the rest is the same, font, text color, all that stays. The text is shorter, so I actually want to move it further over onto the screen. And I'm going to draw it a little bit higher up because in the position, uh, so this click anywhere to start text is just going to go in the exact same position that it did before. So that means that U1 needs to be a little bit above it. So that's why I'm only adding 50 as opposed to adding 100. And the last condition is game over equals minus one. So that means that the ball has gone out of play. The player has lost the round. So I can just copy all of this down and just change the first line from you won to you lost. I'll show that again, same font, text color. I'll show it in the same positions as the text above. So that should now be everything. Let me just run this code to check. And I have made a typo somewhere. Let's come up here. Uh, oh, <laughs> okay. Font, not don't. Try again. And there we go. Click anywhere to start. As soon as I click, the text disappears. Goes off the screen. You lost. Click anywhere to start. 
click again and the game resets all right so that is it that is a fully functioning breakout game uh, got all the mechanics in it got the collision detection the blocks are a little bit more advanced than usual in the sense that they've got multiple lives so you can uh, you can play around with that as much as you want you can change them to all be the same you can change the colors on them you can change the speed of the ball so it's all very customizable uh, but I would say that this game is pretty much complete for these purposes so if you found this video useful then please do leave a like and uh, if you want to stay up to date with more of these tutorials then feel free to subscribe all right thanks for watching